My first question is, how important is sales for your company or company on a scale from zero to 100? What do you think? How important? 100? Who has less? <laughs> I can't say who has more. Yeah, because sometimes I hear 50, 40, 60. It is not the total thing that you sell things because first you have to have a great idea. But if the sale is not working, if sales is not working, the whole thing, of course, is for you a big problem and the whole company will go down. So now, first of all, I would like you to take out something to write. Because, yes, I know, I'm teasing you. We have some interaction going on. Don't give me this look. <laughs> Can you have something to write or share something to write? Or take out your smartphone. You can write, you can text in your smartphone. All right. Just take yourself 20, 30 seconds. What do you think of a typical salesperson? What comes to your mind when you think of a typical salesperson? Let's go. I see some people smiling. It's always a good sign. We are full of sympathy for a real salesperson. So, scream out some answers for me. What do you think, real salesperson? You? Sleazy guys. Sleazy guys. What else? Extroverted. Extroverted. Something from this section here. You with the glasses. He knows how to close. He knows how to close. Oh, oh. And now is something from the middle section here. High pressure sales situation. High pressure. I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Have here, this is what we usually think of a typical salesperson. We hope that he's closing. And when you go to literature or coachings, the first thing you learn always is, no, don't do it this way. Why? Who of you, please stand up. Please stand up. I'm serious. Please stand up. I came here on bike, you know, so this is all I know, and I, I really think that it's cool that you're all here. So who of you right now is having a startup or is about to form a builder startup? Please, you can have a seat, the rest please um, keep standing. Wow, quite some people. So the rest please keep standing. If you think like this is a way to get away, <laughs> that was not the game. Okay, the rest please. Um, think of yourself as someone who's applying for a job. So either you think of yourself, you want to get a new job, um, so you're the product, or the company you're working for, probably you're on some product. And right now I would like you again to go to your notes and think of what qualities would be necessary so the product or the service that your startup is offering would have a real good chance to find its customers, its clients. 10, 20 seconds, come on. Um, what are the qualities that the person needs who is really good in selling the things that your startup is producing or offering? I don't have any music playing now, Julie. I have some music now. What are the qualities? What qualities do you have for your startup or for your product or idea? What qualities would be necessary to sell them very well? Uh, okay, it's not quality of product, it's quality of uh, communication. Quality of communication, so we need very good communication skills. Who also has something with very good communication skills? Wow, two people. <laughs> what else? What do you need for your product to be sold in a very good way? Passion. Passion? A serene understanding, very, very important, you know. Something from this section, you, yes. Yes. To know how to solve problems, because your product will create so many problems, or? <laughs> okay, so the person needs, I, I now make something out of what you said, needs the ability, the mindset, to understand the problem. The thing is that, 
I always find when I coach people, and for instance, in, um, in small, middle-sized um, companies, and I coach executives, it's in the beginning, we always have, they are afraid to be that, but actually when we think of who is the best person to sell this product, usually, it's yourself. You are the best person to sell your product. Now, if you find some typical sales guy, he can come in and he can think about the problem and the service and he will run out. But he will, especially in the beginning, miss a lot of points. Especially in the beginning when we need a quick validation. What we need is someone who really knows about the product and the service. So it's much easier to get you being a great sales guy or girl for your product than a salesperson to know your product, know your clients, go with you through validation circles and close the deal. So for me, I hope, I hope that you see that you are the best salesperson in the beginning. I will mention sales teams later for your product or your service. So let me see where I was. Okay. Now, yes, I should say something about myself. Um, I never wanted to do sales because I was always thinking of this sleazy guy who is totally pushing and pressuring on some sales. Why, why did I end up standing here and speaking about sales? This is, of course, always a long, a long story. Um, it happened to me that when I was like in my early 20s, I was totally enthusiastic about meditation. So I went to a lot of meditation seminars, and those meditation seminars were quite expensive. And I was also totally into health, so I was... Um, I'm going on the street collecting signatures for um, more healthy nutrition or I would um, collect signatures for parties that were not yet allowed to take place in the election. Now, no one liked to do this because it's very, very annoying if you run through the street looking for people who not only give you a signature but also have to give you the whole address and trust you that this thing staying with you, the person that just ran into them on the street, that this whole thing is handled in a very well way. And when I did this in Austria, we even had to take this person and ask this person on the street, after giving me all the information, whether it would come to me, with me to the authorities and show in front of an, someone from the state or from the city government, his passport. So you can imagine how many people, you know, walking on the street would just love, you know, to give me a signature for this strange party, take um, their time off, go with me to, to the mayor's hall, to city hall, showing their passport and saying, yes, I support this guy, and here is my data. Yeah, good luck to you. No one. No one did this in the beginning, and the first day I remember, I was just standing like, well, let's have some pizza. Uh, we could, yeah, look at this, I could have talked to him, I could have talked to her. There are moments, some guys know this actually, these moments like I could have talked to her, I could have talked to her. So for me, selling a lot has a lot to do sometimes with dating also when you go out in the evening for guys. So it's always good to learn sales. And in the beginning, I was, it was very tough for me, but with the days, I totally learned that when you stand up in the morning, you have this stupid feeling that you don't like to go out, you hate rejection. I was afraid of rejection, totally. And by just going out every day, and in the end, I came to something like 120, 150 signatures per day. And like this, I um, earned some nice money, because why? Why did I earn some money? Some guesses? Meditation. No, because, because the adults didn't like to do this thing. You know? Ah, oh, let the 20 you guys. Yeah, let the students do it. Yeah, we are happy to stay at home. You collect the signature so we can take part in the election. Yeah, it was, I was running here through Berlin, actually, it was in those days still um, living in Munich. Sometimes I ended up in some underground station somewhere because I just went always with the person who would talk to me. And I found out later when I, um, I studied computer science, psychology, adult education, did coaching trainings and all those things to become a communication coach. And later on I found that one of my toughest trainings for becoming someone who was dealing with communication, tra training other people in communication, was those weeks on the street running after people. Hey, are you allowed to elect in Berlin? Okay, are you allowed to Berlin? No, uh, are you? Oh, sorry, I, I know, you have it all time. So, just a moment, and like this, until, until I had all the, all the signatures for that city or in Austria for that city. So, 
I know how it feels. I know how it sucks. In the beginning, no one would, no one would stop. They would just run by. And later, when I was then becoming coach, you know, you're young, 20-something, and you go to a company, and you say, hey, I'm a communication coach. You want to hire me? Who? You could be my son. You know, the same challenge again. So what for me with time was really an inside enlightenment is that the best salesperson for the things that I offer is me, is myself. And I hope that it's very hot outside. I can share some knowledge. Maybe you have one or two ideas that you can take away from this evening. Then that would be great because um, I know it's tough. It's really tough. When you think of sales and you go online, you look for things, you, you can get totally irritated with all the things that you should do and the processes and, and actually, and you sit there and you read all the things and it's great. Why is it great? Because when you do this, you don't do that. You don't do that, you know? You do this, oh, let's be there. Oh, let's look at that. Oh, this is nice. But actually, you're wasting your time. I um, took some guys that I really like. No, I don't really like them, but um, I have great respect to many great personalities are actually great salesperson. Bill Gates, um, you probably know the story. One of his biggest moves was to manage to get IBM to have his operating system on the computer that was sold. So he is a great salesperson. He is a great salesperson. If you listen to interviews with him, he is like this and always um, actually with um, Terminator, he should not be the Terminator. But he talked the director into becoming the Terminator. Now, this is a salesperson because um, then he um, is a great salesperson. Actually, in this interview, you can look it up, the interview with Forbes. There's one sentence he's saying. He's saying something like, we would go to every major label and they would all turn us down. But the genius thing that we did was, we kept asking. And this is a, um, uh, Tony Robbins, he's a great motivation coach who knows Tony Robbins just by chance, you know, sometimes I have the feeling that I only know the old coaches, but it's still. Uh, and yeah, he started by selling audio programs, you know, like from door to door. And you definitely feel when you listen to his things that he's coming from sales. All right, so let's come to the, to the next point. If you listen to sales insights, it's not like this. You don't listen to the seminar tonight, you come home and you close every client, you know? It's not the way, it's not, not like people on dating platforms. They, they open an account and then they think, yes, that's me, I make it. That's not true. What's actually true is you have to build muscle. We have to build muscle, and I hope that tonight you get take some inspiration. You already know a lot about communication. I know that and you know a lot about selling, and maybe with some insights, it's really about building a muscle. When I coach people all the years, it was always the same thing. In the beginning, you know, you have this, oh, I want to learn this. And then you have the first experience. Who knows what I'm talking about? Come on. Be gentle with me. Give me some, give me some feedback. Thank you. So we have to build muscle. And the muscle is always coming with what? Pain. Pain and? Pain is very nice. The first word is pain. Wow. I should really change my lecture. I thought the first, I thought repetition would be the first one. <laughs> repetition and, of course, also pain. Yes, because we still have you becoming the great salesperson. You know, so the transformation is not taking place by itself or some nice coffee although there's nice places in Berlin to have that. Okay, so what are the real challenges that I see? It's, first of all, it's getting started, having quick validations. People really love, I have, I have startups and then the, what happens is, you know, I talk to them. Of course, who brought me in, the VC brought me in. Now the startup says, yeah, this is very interesting. And I know, yes, son, we should talk in December. Because right now we have A, this version, and then we have this, and then all, we have already some testers. So from there, and then the summer, you know, December. Why not December? And then I think like, okay, what's, what's your burn rate? You know, really, you have so much money or so, such a 
low burn rate that you can really afford to start in December thinking about sales when you already have guys testing it and are actually um, content. So for me, it's very important to get started quicker. I, you can talk to everybody, everybody says, try to sell it quicker, try. Do you find someone who would pay for it? Everybody says, yes, I would pay for that. You know this from other lectures. But the question is, would they really pay for it? Then, I don't mean with preparation that you have to do the preparation of um, your product. You have to prepare your sales. We come to that in a, in a moment. The toughest is here, contacting and calling. Contacting and calling and then handling rejection. Why is rejection just such a big point for us? If you take it personal, if you take it personal, and the thing is, yes, we do take it personal because it's our product. It was this person that I know. It was this person that I thought that's interested. That was all my work that I did. That was the VC is waiting. So I take things personal. I take things very personal. I take things personal. After a bad sales, um, after a bad talk, I have to make state management with myself. You know, you see it like this. No, my wife likes, oh, that was not a good talk. How, are you? Mm, how about something to eat? Oh. Yeah, we have to know and we have to have mechanics to handle rejection and then following through. So what I see, and this is what I meet again and again, people that book me or, or do special sales trainings and stuff like this, they get caught up. It's so easy to get caught up. You know, there's always some call, there's always something to do, there's always this one thing, this one book you wanted to read before you pick up the phone, there's always. So it's really, you should, like, you must not get into this trap of being caught up by your other business. Guys that say, okay, we call on this day, and we call on that day, and that, and that. Yeah, so much to do. All the follow-ups. And it's a pity. Because it's, re it's really important whether you manage to get through with your sales or not. Okay, now let's get to them. Why I'm building this in in motivation is very important for me. Because in the end, what I found out also when I ask for all those signatures or when I call all those people for a course, of, is sometimes it's more important that you want to do it and do it instead of knowing what would have been the best way. In the end, I will have a little pre present, um, so you have um, some, some help on especially this part, and develop from there your own, um, your own script, your own information. Okay, so what's next? Good. Now, what's, what's the first thing that you have to do when you want to Sell. What's the first thing? Contact. Before contact? Build a list. Build a list. You have to build a list. Who of you has a list of prospects or clients already? Just one, two, three. Oh, nice. Very nice. How regularly are you updating your list, filling the list? Uh, I'm collecting information about each one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you remind yourself? Do you have calendar entries? Um, is it a rhythm? Is it something like working out that you do on a regular basis? You have it weekly, probably? Um, that's for the full list and for every client I'm working with, I do it daily. Beautiful. Okay, so we have here a very nice example. Thank you. It's something that should ideally be in your calendar. There are tools that can help you, like CRMs. You know, I say something to CRMs later, but the most important thing is that you in your head decide to follow through on that. It's, it's really worth it, and you have to, in the beginning, fill your list. Now, where can you have entries for your list? What can you do? Come on, some inputs. Where can you fill your list from? You can buy it. This is something. Who else? You can get a scraper, and so you can scrape target segments from the web. You scrape it and work with the web. Mm -hmm. What else? Build a landing page. Build a landing page, okay, then you have to market it and so forth. Very simple in the beginning, everybody of you probably thought of it, it's just asking and going through a few references. I always, I always like to 
ask whether with every contact that I have to always go deeper and ask him and ask him and ask him and ask him. So this is something that has to fit to your business. This has to fit to your business. Maybe landing page is the perfect thing for your business. Maybe you can buy that. Uh, whatever is the something that has to be done on a regular basis because if you don't have a big list and you follow through with your first sales calls, you come to a dead end. You think like, okay, whom can I call now? And then suddenly what's happening again, you're getting caught up, you don't follow through, you're somewhere here and actually you fall off. And to get into a regular sales process is very tough for our, for our way, how we are. We hate rejection, so then we have to start again. So it's really important that you somehow have to get started and um, I'm sorry that I have so, so, um, so just very simple images, but I thought I don't want to bore you um, at the evening here. It's really whatever helps you. I have um, stickers on my, um, on my mirror, whatever, whatever helps me. I have reminders, whatever helps you. It's um, really important, try it out and just start to follow through. So this is how we always think that we will be when we are on the phone. Who is um, having phone calls? Who will need phone calls? Okay, phone calls. Good. Who is more in newsletter lists, um, emailing? Okay. What else do we have here? Any other, other possibilities? Okay, the reality is, okay, and this is also very interesting for me, who already does regular calling? Oh, nice, wow, okay. And who wants to get into your regular calling? Oh, okay. I had hoped that it's a little bit other way around because how this is how you feel usually when you pick up the phone for the first call or maybe like this, you totally feel off. What for me is very important is um, I, everybody should develop his system. For me, it's very important to have 10. I need 10, 10 prospects that I can call through because with call one, two, three, I'm feeling usually quite stupid. I'm not really round. I'm, I have, um, I'm too quick on the, on the phone. And even after years, this is still like this. So have um, a time span and you go through several, like 10 is my ideal. Also, this is uh, working actually um, very nice with other situations um, for guys at night who want to go out and meet some girls, I would always say never try to meet someone, or maybe for girls who want to meet some boys. Um, take something like 10, because what you need is a quota. We need quota, we need the next person to call. So I would always recommend, before you start with any CRMs, that you have an Excel sheet, and in an Excel sheet you write everyone down that you, um, that you call, and it's very important to be quick in knowing your quota because many times when I uh, coach people, they don't know actually, do they need 18 people to call? So number 19 is always, or one out of um, 19 is always successful, or is it one out of eight, one out of 20? So many times people get um, caught up calling people because they don't know through how many no's they have to go. So this is one thing that's very important. Have a list, so every time someone turns you down, you can say, okay, that was number three, that was number four, number five, number six, I'm still fine, I'm, I'm still fine. This was number seven, oh, number seven was nice. Uh, number seven was a good one, okay, so uh, I have a follow-up. But um, And then again, oh, this is number one, this is number two. We need tricks to disassociate from the rejection that we usually have, since we are not completely fully salesperson, but specialist who learn to sell. So you have to allow yourself to go through this process where you're actually not very cool on the phone, but need to get in, and you have to know your, you have to know your quota. Now we come to a part that's, for me, a very, very important, is once you're on the phone, what was necessary before, before you call someone, what do we need? We need a telephone number, this is, oh yes, we do need that. <laughs> what else? Name, of the name, what else? Passion and excitement. Passion and excitement, so for that we need state management, exactly. This is a part that I want to have with it. I took this image, I think it's very cheesy to take, um, to take um, some lightnings. Why is it? 
First of all, what I found out, a lot of people are better in calling when there are several guys in a room, at least two, calling parallel. And I find sometimes that one is waiting, so the, especially when you start to call, one is waiting for the other one, so it's silent. No, I totally, I, I totally, I think it's totally important to be in a good peer group. And if you have several guys, I would even meet with someone from a total different product for calling. If you have um, problems with getting into calling, and this is a little bit the scope of my talk for people who are not so good and want to get better in calling, do it with others, do this together. When I was um, collecting signatures on the street or when I was doing calls for, for courses, for resident courses that were like something um, like 2,000 or 3,000 euros plus, and I was doing this with others. It always helped. You, sometimes you listen to something and you think like, oh, that was a nice way of handling an objection. Some of you think, oh, that was a nice opening. So to have a peer group is something that totally helps you apart from the other. Then you need to be in state, and this is something that I totally expect from you. If you sell your product, I think you should be in state. So you should really love your product, and usually if this would be a workshop, I would now ask you to write 10 things that you really love about your product and exchange this with your neighbor. So since we don't have so much things to write, and um, anyway, we are, anytime we are interrupted by pizza, I would, like to turn, uh, I would like you to turn to your neighbor and tell two things about your product to your neighbor right now that you totally love, that you're passionate about. Let's go. I need to wake you up a little bit. Come on. You can turn around, sir. We have this very, very nice uh, gentleman behind you. Two points that you're really passionate about. The two of you already exchange your points? Please, exchange your points. I'm serious. It's very important. I need some engagement, otherwise we all, you know, with this hot weather, you know, I'm melting here. Okay. Thank you very much. Next point. Next point, and you will need, you will need your partner again. Something, if you, want to, if you want to come in the direction, what is our target usually on the call? What's our target on the call? What's the target on the call? Sale, what else? Referral, what else? What is, what is the target of, of, a, of a call? Meeting. So, I don't know about your product, but not all products can be sold directly on the phone. Maybe they can, but many cases I know from startups that I work with in Berlin want to have a meeting. So, it's very important that when you go to this call, that you don't have those high expectations, but you just know exactly what's just the next little step. It's all about having the next little step. This is very important because usually the person on the other side is not in the, in the mode of, of buying unless you know you really come with something that everybody needs and he was the whole time waiting for you to call him, which is very rare. Usually we have something where we need the next step that would be a mail and checking out something, downloading, making um, a trial version, and starting something like this, a test version. So always... For me, mostly, my next target was a meeting, a personal meeting or a 20-minute conversation. And I said that uh, for those who are interested, I have um, um, prepared something. Um, it's a little ebook where I have some um, cold call openers and things that are important. For me, the target there is to get the meeting. To get the meeting is um, a main objective. If Selling, if your product is sellable, I also had this case that I, was, um, that I was coaching someone and he was always going for meetings and I said like, yeah, but you, you, the thing is a test version so you don't build the person anything. It's downloadable like uh, in 15, 20 seconds while you go for a meeting. So make, uh, make some check with some other people is what you think that maybe you want to have a meeting but you can sell your product straight away. 
Of course, I'm not saying that always go for meeting, but go for what's really good possible for you. It's always a question, what's the next step? And then what is very, very important, what, where is the sales usually taking place? The sales taking other way, uh, so other way around. is the sales taking place in the first contact, in the first call? No. What do you think percentage wise? After the eighth contact, sometimes yeah, if you go for dating, you know the guy has to spend eight hours with a girl, so maybe this is right, we don't know. No, well, there are some, some research on this, it's really funny. 80%, there's one number, 80% of the sales taking place in your follow-up. So one thing is very important, the follow-up is, 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 is very important. And usually people, after they did all these calls and they went through it, you feel proud. I did it, yes. But usually then the work is starting. You have to get after the call. And this is what I mean if don't get caught up because with all the follow-ups, if you don't fill your funnel again with new contacts, it's, it's usually you lose, you lose your grip and then um, some, you can get into some traps. I just had this. Um, I, was, um, I was working with, um, with, a, with a person that had... Um, has very good communication skills actually, is a very good executive and, and she wanted to do more business and for that it's very important, this is a big service to call more clients. And she was totally afraid of cold calling and I was ask, asking like why with your communication skills are you afraid of cold calling? And then what came out was that um, she w did um, do some cold calling for some days like last year that went not so well, and then due to other projects, she had to stop this. So what happened was, this whole build up of, I don't want to call, was in a little bubble somewhere in the past. There was never some successes afterwards. So after this experience, it was even tougher for her to open this room inside of her again, where she would be open to do cold calls. So for me, it's very important. We need the follow-ups to make the sales, but we need always to do more new first contact customer because this is the stuff where usually our subconscious has the most um, fear of, is most most afraid of. Okay, what else can I, uh, what else can I get you? Um, what I find when I when I sit with people who do their calls, I sit with them and they do the callings, either cold calling or, or um, follow up calls. Many times I find that people are really quick talking because they are in this mode of being, of course, nervous. And what's the most important thing for me is would you please come here? This is always, you know, sitting in the front row, sometimes not so wise. <laughs> now, what's, what's the problem with, with, um, with sales usually is that I want something, you know? And this is exactly what he feels. Now, if I'm nervous, I'm even more like this. That's why I say you should take like 10 calls or something because you're getting better with like the third or fourth call. call and you will be released in some seconds, in <laughs> minutes. Um, for me, the state of mind, the mindset I, that I always had in mind was never come like this, but stand in the same direction. Try to get as quick as possible to look in his, in his direction. And then, if you're good in this, you can move him. If not, not. Thank you very much. Give him a hand just so he have some movement. Come on, we, get some, we need some fresh air here. No, it's really. I say to this person, on the next call, do me a favor. Try to connect. Ask something. What is on the other side? The other person is a human. Now, people don't buy from people who just push in and say, oh, you want this, this is so good, come on, trust me. Why, why should I do that? Why should I trust? People buy from friends, from people they know. Now, we only have some moments, but in those moments, we can, there are of course a lot of communication skills and tricks like building rapport, things like this. We can create a connection if we manage to get out of the nervous state and dare to take some seconds to squeeze in question that you would have if you knew this person. This is possible. 
And since people don't do it, and this is also, and I wrote some examples in this ebook, um, will probably be finished by Monday. <laughs> and write it down. Some people really need to write it down. For those who are pros, you know, who do this and are cool and you know, and I know all those guys and they greet me on the street, fine. Um, but for those who, who really are at the stage where they did their first, do their first trials, write it down, read it out, really like tickle it off if you did something so you know that you asked questions that get you in some kind of connection. And then when you do this, and now I forgot to squeeze in the slide, what I would like you to be is Sherlock Holmes. Why do I need Sherlock Holmes? Because you want to ask the right questions to find out what they want or need or feel. And exactly this is what are we looking for? What is like finding gold in this conversation? Finding the need and what, what would even be stronger than a need? What's the pain? The pain. We try to find the problem, the pain, the need, something like this. So turn to your neighbor right now and try to figure out for your product what question could you ask in a conversation so you would get to the pain or to the problem. Let's go. Now. Oh, wow. Huh? Yeah, I know. This is the stuff that you sometimes sit half an hour with to figure that out or maybe days. Try to find questions that would follow in this conversation that would bring you to pains or problems. Who has a good example for me? Who dares to share his or her good example of a question? Yes? Okay, sorry. I hope that you continue with this talk later. What was the question you came up with? One moment again. One moment. Let's, let's, let's get together again. Thank you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what, what did... What? What's the biggest problem for you now to get with your startup to the next stage? That was my question. That was your question, and what would you sell with this question? Well, I just wanted to understand the problem. <laughs> okay. What's the pain? Uh, this is the biggest pain at the moment. I can go from there if I. Okay, then you can go from there. First of all, I'll give him a hand for being so, so bold to, to give an answer. Come on! <laughs> Who has something connected to his or her um, product or service? A question that would follow to some problem or pain connected to the product. This is your time to share your product with us. Okay, so you have been first. I'm sorry, you have been almost. How much money do you spend on returns per year? How much money do you spend on returns per year? And your product? Um, size advisor for clothes. Okay, how much do you spend? Now, what do we know when we hear this question? First of all, give him a hand too, please. We know that this is a question that some people don't want to answer. Hey, do you have a moment for me? How much? So what you need, what I would now recommend is take this question and try to break it down into small steps to get there in a conversation with someone that you don't know. The, the, really, the, the quest here is, it's very good, to have those questions and now think of how do you get there. Sometimes you just can't say it ask things like this just in the beginning because the other one thinks like, oh yeah, you're a salesperson, thank you very much, bye. But I want to know how much, ah, yeah, yeah, sir. I don't share this on the phone, I don't know you. So it's very important to do the connection and try to get the questions that lead you to those questions. Okay, now, um, pizza's not coming, it's very hot, we have very nice conditions tonight, huh? Yeah. Ah, it's here already, okay, then I finish with my talk. <laughs> no one told me, I thought, Okay, sorry. Um, what's very important for me, um, another image is, I sometimes meet guys, girls, 
who are doing a startup or offering a service, and what they are not aware of is that their customer is usually on a high speed track of meetings and things, and you come there, you have your time, you know, maybe you sit in the Berlin Oberholz and think of what is your next product, and then you call him, and how do you get on this train without getting hurt? And we're not in Mission Impossible here. You need to be in the same direction, same speed. So what I always say to people who, who think like have some difficulties to get into, there are many, many tricks that you can get into conversations, but try to be on an equal routine, on the same routine. If you have someone who is an um, executive, who is um, having, having a lot of responsibilities, so his days or her days are full, are packed. And if you're coming in, you have, to, you have also to be in a mode. So I always say like, if you're heading your sales period, your sales phase, you want to start um, with your sales, try to get in a routine like your customers. So you feel like your customers. You're in the same mode like your customers. Because it's always easier to jump from one train to another when both are running. If you're standing, there is something, we are like wolves in a pack, I tell you, like people, they, something with you is not the way that they used to have this with other business partners. And that's why I can hardly recommend, I can only recommend that you try to be as close as possible. When you're close, you're much easier in asking bold questions than when you're coming from somewhere hoping to just make this big deal and then everything is great. All right, so this guy is um, for the finish almost. When you did your sales calls and you have all those rejections and you went over it, it's really, it's always very important that you condition yourself that you did something great. So please stand up. We do now something that we call power move. Yeah, we all love the power moves. So you can either do the, the Becker fist or you can do something that... Um, my brother and me in our uh, seminars, we always call the golden goddess. So we go together like this, push it all together. Really, I want to see tension in your body. Come on, everybody. Hold it together, hold it together. Don't run to the toilet. Hold it together. And then, yes, come on. And again, hold it together. Pizza's coming soon. Yes. OK, give yourself a clap. Thank you very much. Give yourself a round of applause. I really admire you being here with this weather. Thank you very much and have great sales. Thank you.